All right. Okay, good morning, everyone. If you can just come and sit, that would be awesome. I sure do appreciate it. And it's so good to hear so much chatter. We do a lot of chatter. Oh, wait a minute, we're a lot of women. <laughs> so that's why we do a lot of chatter. But anyway, it's so good to see you all. I am just thrilled to death that you are here. And um, welcome to Eagle Bend Community Church. I do know that we have a couple of visitors. Um, Jonathan, which is Don Fuller's son, and Heidi, his daughter-in-law. Thank you so much for coming and welcome. Really appreciate it. And thank you, Don, for bringing them. And we also have a very dear older friend, of, not older, but I mean, an old friend, not older, I think we're the same age. <laughs> She's, anyway, Pat Wood, it's so good to see you. I really appreciate you being here. That was so nice of you to be here. And we also have back, Mar uh, Marsha, oh gosh, Bonnie, thank you, oh, <laughs> too many names to remember, Bonnie, thank you, Bonnie, for coming back, I'm so happy to see you, glad you're feeling better and glad you're here, so, um, okay, that took care, yes, ma'am, oh, and Pat and Larry, I didn't see you guys, welcome back, I hope you had a great time, and welcome back to our nice, windy, cold weather. You feel like you were in Chicago with all the wind. <laughs> well, well, we could talk about that later. <laughs> so it's, it's really good. Okay, we have no anniversaries this week, but we do have some birthdays. Uh, Don Eb, uh, Dick Ebden, rather, he's not here, so we won't forget about him. Jan Sanders, it's her birthday, and we'll forget about her. And Ann Oakley, is Ann here? We'll forget about Ann, too. So we have one person left, and that's Tom Raglan. Today's his birthday. So we'll sing happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Our flowers this morning was brought by Marge. Marge seems to be our flower lady. We do have a sign-up sheet in the back, and uh, the, you know, if you can um, think about it, sign up for it, uh, bring flowers you know, in memory of, or in love of, or in care of, or for your birthday, anniversary, or whatever the case may be, that would be really great. Tomorrow is our ladies' luncheon, and uh, Linda Kaminsky, um, see, now you're behind <laughs> You're behind him now, because <laughs> Fred's not here. So Linda Kaminsky, raise your hand. Linda is going to be our, our uh, going to tell her greatest story tomorrow. So please sign up for that. I really appreciate it. And uh, sign up for scripture in the back. The directory, before you leave, make sure that you check your name and all your information is correct. That would be wonderful. Um, we are still collecting for Hurricane Ian. Ian. And if uh, we're collecting today and next Sunday, and if you have extra to give, we really appreciate it. And Lois, where are you? There you go. Oh, just, just let me say, I'm sorry, <laughs> one more thing. Bruce isn't here today. He's in California visiting his daughter and grandchildren. And he was supposed to come home yesterday, but he was having such a great time that they asked him to stay one more day, which I thought was so sweet. So I made the arrangements for him to do that. When, we had our, when he had his business and he would travel, we had a whiteboard in our office and all the employees would put their names on the whiteboard and we would say the numbers of times Bruce calls. Whoever wins, we would take them out to lunch that, that whenever Bruce came back. He, do you know how many times he has called since he's been gone? This is... 10, I wish. Anybody? 32 times. He did. That's what, that's what he kept saying. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I see some boxes coming back. That's exciting. It's fun to see them go out. Fun to see them come back all full. Um, just a quick reminder, there's three ways you can fill your box. You can take a box and you can get started filling it with some of the stuff that's on the table there. 
You can fill a box online. That is $25. Go to SamaritansPurse.org. Shoot, just get on Samaritan's Purse and everything says how to build a box. You'll find it. Or you can make a cash donation to the shoe box that's there with my little alpaca sitting on top of it. And any, any amount is good. It doesn't, doesn't matter. And we'll use that money to pay the $10 that goes with each box and also to help fill them. So that's my message for the day. Well, good morning. Good to see you all. Thanks for the time away. I brought a few pictures. One of the schools Bree is thinking about is in Lincoln, Nebraska. And uh, so we, uh, I brought a few pictures, Calvin, there. Yeah, we met Lil Red. And, uh, and Teresa's, also I have a niece who attends UNL, so we got to see her, Isabel. And uh, Teresa's brother lives in Lincoln, and they are so fun. We had a great time seeing them. And uh, I love state capitals, and I had never seen the capital in Lincoln, so. And Bree was like, do we have to do this? And then she was like, oh, that was pretty awesome. It's a pretty awesome building, so. Uh, she took an artistic photo of me taking it all in, so there you go. So anyway, thank you for the time away. I appreciate it. Thank you, Matt. You even had my toes tapping. All right. There was a lot of tapping toes out there. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> welcome to Eagle Bend Community Church, and welcome to Brent. Try. Can't read my writing. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Glad you're here. <clears throat> Let's open with a word of prayer. <clears throat> Lord, we gather here before you with thanksgiving. Thank you for this day as we have come here for this worship service. Thank you for your grace and protection upon each one of us. We invite your presence in this service. Let all that we do here today be a living sacrifice to you. Accept our sacrifices of praises, prayers, and offerings for this service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our first hymn is Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. Please stand if you can.
be seated. Let us bow our head in prayer. Father, you are our creator and sustainer. As the leaves have turned and fell from the trees, help us embrace the changes we see as a natural part of life. As we worship you this morning, help us stand strong and sure when the winds blow. Remind us through it all, you are with us every moment, every step, every time, in every situation. We come to worship you today with our ups and downs, doubts and fears, trials and triumphs. We're grateful you have created each one of us and molded us into your own image. We pray for all those who are sick and suffering. May they be consoled and healed through the love and power of the Holy Spirit. We pray for all of those who have been hardened of heart and feel unable to respond to the wisdom of faith. May their hearts be opened by those who witness around them. We pray for the leaders of our church. We pray for our leaders in, in, in the United States and the world and the economic structures that impacts us all. Father, we offer these prayers not from a timid heart, but in the sure knowledge that they have been heard. May they be fulfilled according to your will. We make this prayer through the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our scripture reading today is taken from both Revelation and Job. <clears throat> Revelation 12, 10. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now the, sound, the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ has come for the accuser of our brethren has been thrown down, he who accuses them before our God day and night. Then from Job 1, 8 through 11. The Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? Is there no one like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, fearing God and turning away from evil? Then Satan answered the Lord, does Job fear God for nothing? Have you not made a hedge around him and his house and all that he has on every side? You have blessed the word of his hand, the work of his hands, and his possessions have increased in the land. This is the word of the Lord. Our next hymn is, I'd Rather Have Jesus. Please stand if you're able.
please remain standing for the doxology. I appreciate that Matt put the song, I'd rather have Jesus, right before offering so we can see if we were lying. Uh, I'd rather have Jesus than um, silver or gold, riches untold, than to be the king of a vast domain. You know, that's what Satan offered Jesus in Matthew 4. He'd been fasting for a while, offers him bread. We've talked about that. What are you being offered besides giving your best to the Lord? That was the Cain and Abel situation. Abel offered his best. Cain offered some stuff, not his best. So as we come to offering, both with our tithes and offerings financially, as well as with our hearts, do we bring our best? Are we giving sacrificially? that other people might hear the good news of the gospel of Jesus. Let's pray for that. Jesus, our giving is a measure of our worship. Our giving is a measure of our faith, trusting you. Will you take these gifts and will you multiply them like only you can? That Eagle Bend Community Church might continue to be a light for you and influence others in the way of Christ. It's in your name we pray. Amen.
Well, who's excited to be here? <laughs> That's good. I like that, especially here. So some of you think, will probably think that I make up my stories. I don't. Um, went to Houston to see my son and my daughter. Uh, she's at school at Texas A&M. My son goes to high school down there and has arrived at, to the airport. Uh, Frontier is now the apparently difficult airline. They delayed us a couple hours. So arriving back about 11 turned into arriving back about 1 a.m., get the shuttle to my car, drive home, and I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> I am. Because what we're going to talk about is very, very important. In fact, you know me, I'm watching a football game. I hear some guy about 30 feet away, God blessing people. One of the largest human beings I've ever seen, probably about six, six, seven, three thirty. 330. And he's with another guy who happened to be wearing a Dallas Cowboy jersey, and they were talking to people, and they made their way. And I said, man, you got to, I said, I heard you over there dropping the God bless on people. I said, so uh, are you a pastor? And so we had this conversation, and it was fun. You know me, I chatty Kathy. So I'm feeling fresh to be here. Um, I've only had about that much caffeine. Um, 32 times. That's sweet. <laughs> it's not over. She says it's not over. <laughs> Bruce, we're talking about you. <laughs> I think that's cute. I think that's cute. Uh, because we are talking about being called. So I brought my uh, noise-canceling headphones. These are Bose noise-canceling headphones. And you don't realize how loud the drone of the plane is because when you walk on the plane, you already have noise-canceling for those children that wish they weren't there, the parents who wish they weren't there. You don't really realize it's nice. And on occasion, you know, you readjust them and you hear how loud the plane is. It's crazy how loud it is. It's crazy how loud life is. Um, our, our scripture reading, Revelation 12.10 says this, then I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God. It's kind of got a rhythm to it. The salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren has been thrown down, and this is the important part, because he's been accusing them day and night, and it's over. At that time, it's over. We look forward to that day. But while we're in this day, it's still happening. So today's title is, What is in your ear? What are you hearing? What are you hearing said in your ear? What are you listening to? What are you taking from those? The point of that passage is that the accusations have stopped. They've stopped. And if we're good Bible students, we would understand that today, those accusations 24-7 day and night are going on from the devil into your and my ear. Oh, look at her with those fancy shoes. She just thinks she's the stuff. Did you see how he said that? Did you see the way they parked and the way they walked into church? Oh my gosh. They just think they're God's gift to the world. Oh my gosh. Can you believe they did that? Can you believe they said that? These are the things that go through about other people. It gets worse. You should be ashamed of yourself. Which, you know what, in your generation, that was a parenting tactic I don't think was a very good one. <laughs> Telling your children you should be ashamed. Because now, you know, Brene Brown, it's all about shame. Could God really forgive you? Look at you. I mean, if the people at Eagle Bend Community Church knew what you were thinking, saying, doing yesterday, they would not want to sit next to you.
that friend of yours, they don't really like you, do they? They just like because you buy them lunch, because you give them a ride, because you X, Y, Z. What are you hearing in your ear? About others? About yourself? You know, it was interesting for Adam and Eve. Uh, we, we talk about this a lot, but it's foundational. Eve heard that God just might be holding out on her. He just might have a trick up his sleeve that he's not sharing. He might not just love her as much (laughs) as he puts forth that he does. But she fell for it, and we fall for it. And it should make us angry. That's me. That's playing dirty. So, remember the flaming arrows analogy, which has made its way into Bible study, and we talked about it a lot. If you're, if you're not coming to Bible study, we talk about you, but we pray for you. We bless your heart. That's my mother. I'm kidding. It is awesome. It is dynamic. It is energetic, and you're missing out. So you need to come. I don't know what we'd do if everybody from church comes, but I think it would be a great time, be a party. But we're learning together. It's great. But the devil is consistently shooting things at our ear. It comes in. In fact, some people refer to the eye and the ear as an eye gate and an ear gate because we get to choose what goes through. Let's say you're in a situation and somebody begins to speak ill of another person. We would call it gossip. We would call it slander. We would call it jealousy or envy or whatever. If you hear that, is your reaction to say, hey, you know what, they're not here, let's not do that? Or is our reaction to go, oh, this is going to be good? More intel. Hmm. What are we listening to? About the accusation, the passage that was read from Job, the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? There's no one like him on the earth. He's blameless and upright, fearing God, turning away from evil. Then Satan answered the Lord, and this is what you and I hear all the time. Things similar. Does Job fear God for nothing? Have you not made a hedge about him and his house and all that he has on every side? You have blessed the works of his hands and his possessions and have increased the land. And you go, well, I really don't hear that. Oh, you don't? How many times have you had this thought go through your mind? Well, God must love them more than he loves me. Because look at how he blesses them. (laughs) See, you thought it was going to be about God blessing you, but we often hear it in regards to someone else. Well, he must love them more. He's gifted them more. Look how special they are. Look what they can do, blah, blah, blah. You remember we talked about true humility is being able to, with a clear conscience, to not be envious of another person, but to celebrate him and cheer for him in the purity of heart. That's maturity. Who was in Job's ear? Who all was in Job's ear? Say again. His friends. Yep, Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zophar. You can say that, Eliphaz, Bildad, Zophar. I would make these songs up for my kids so they could learn the Bible. So I could learn the Bible. Elihu was there. He's the one that seems to have some sense. Who else was in Job's ear? Ah, his wife. Bless her heart. As my mother would say. That's code for let's pray for her after we gossip about her. (laughs) His wife his life partner. And she doesn't have encouraging things, does she? She's saying, get over with. Commit spiritual suicide. Curse God and die. It's interesting, her theology. She feels like if he curses God, God will kill him. That's some interesting theology. The interesting thing is, At this point in his life, it doesn't seem that Job is hearing from God. God goes silent, and he hears from him at the end of the book. 
if you're in a season when you feel like you're not hearing from God, don't panic. Go with the last set of orders you heard from Him. Get in the Word. It says He loves me. He so loved the world. I'm going to go with that. Be careful what we listen to. When I was in college, I walked on at the University of Missouri to play football. I stood a whopping 5'6". I think I was up to 160 pounds, pretty much what I weigh right now. Why do you laugh? Jerks? I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I'm a little more than 160 right now. But um, I had a lot of hair. I was tied for the biggest helmet on the team. Okay, I got a big head. I was pre-med. And I went and sat with my pre-med advi advisor, who was a character, and he said, what is wrong with you? <laughs> no comments from Betty. <laughs> I teed her up. That's soft serve right there. He said, what is wrong with you? I said, I don't know what you're talking about. He goes, your grammar is awful. I said, I understand what you're talking about. And he starts to mimic how I speak. Because I was speaking like I was hearing in the locker room and I didn't even know it. And the grammar at that time from a rough part of East St. Louis and lower South Florida was not fabulous. Those people were flunking the two-hour health class. It was mandatory to take. I had picked up a certain vernacular and just a way of pronouncing words, which for one, for a small Caucasian guy with a lot of bleached out blonde hair, didn't exactly m match. I was hearing and it was influencing me and I had no idea. People say, when they listen to music, oh, I don't listen to the words. I remember standing in our weight room in high school. It was a Saturday morning. We'd played the night before. And I'm watching my coach. And there's an ACDC song on. And the lyrics are wretched. And I'm watching him just, and he's in a daze. You know, he's just standing there. But it was like, he had the words memorized, and he was mouthing them, and he didn't even know. We do this. We do this. We just repeat what we hear. We let things into our lives without caution. What is in your ear? What are you hearing? Jesus would say it like this. Mark 4 and following. Oh, nope, it's not Mark 4. It's um, John 10. Mark's coming. My sheep listen to my voice, or my sheep hear my voice. The English is unfortunate there, the translation. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life. They shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. What is he saying? My sheep know what my voice sounds like. Is that true? Yes. Good. I would say I think this is one of the failures of the church to help people with this. Let me explain it like this. You, when, when you were young, you could be in a crowd of people. But if mama said your voice, it was unmistakable. You could hear it like that. If you got the middle name in there, you know you're in trouble. <laughs> Trent Aaron Ballard, very terse. I was like, I'm toast. <laughs> Jesus is saying, that his followers know his voice. Now, if you say, well, I'm a Christian, I just don't hear him audibly. He speaks to the Spirit, to your Spirit. 
Have you ever had this situation? Where did that come from? I should message, I, I, sh I should call that person. I should reach out to that person. And you call and you find out they're in the middle of a difficult time. Don't just go, oh, well, that was interesting. That was God telling you to contact that person. That's, that's some special intelligence there. You have the Holy Spirit, I have the Holy Spirit. If Myrna's going through something, the Lord can tell me, I need to call her. I remember the days of snail mail before email. I felt like I should pray for a friend on a certain night at a certain time. So I wrote a handwritten letter and I put it in the mail and they read it and they sent the letter back and the turnaround time was seven to ten days. And I found out at that very time, yes, I needed to pray for them because yes, they were actually under persecution and yes, this was happening. Oh my gosh, the fact that we can find it out like this should be awesome for our faith and our ministry and advancing the kingdom of caring for people. Hey, the Lord just brought you to mind. What's going on? Now, you might be a person that goes, oh, that makes me sound like I'm out there. Okay. Oh, maybe that was just the enchiladas from lunch. That is you trying to make an excuse for not hearing God. That is you trying to make an excuse. Don't do that. That would be the other person in your ear, day and night, the devil. See, this is how we care for people. Can you imagine? You're going through a difficult time, and what you feel like is nobody knows what I'm going through. I feel isolated and alone, and nobody would understand how I feel. And ping, you get a text, and somebody said, the Lord asked me to reach out to you. What's going on? See, the problem is it's going to put an end to our pity party. Because the Lord is trying to get involved and rescue us from it. I can't tell you how many times in the middle of the night, in the middle of the day, whether to me or from me. And you know what it does to your faith when you feel like you're supposed to reach out to that person, then you find out, oh my gosh. Even if you've done it a million times, you still find yourself going, wow, that really was you, God. But it reinforces hearing his voice. I may have shared this story. I share a lot of stories. I'll repeat it. I hadn't heard from a friend of mine in 10 days, getting out of a difficult situation. And at night, it's about 9.30, he said, hey, I just feel like the Lord said to pray for you, so just so you know I'm praying. That means I don't have an ego need to be involved. They want to share, okay. The next morning, it was much stronger. Hey, I just feel like the Lord is saying to you, if you went backwards in this situation, that he cares about you, etc., etc., etc. How do I know how to do this? Well, I saw that Jesus said, I do what the Father tells me to do, I say what he tells me to say. That's a pretty good example. That's what we're supposed to do. So I'm just trying to follow that. The person said, well, please don't judge me, but la, 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 la. I went backwards in the situation. Despite the size of my cranium, I'm not smart enough to figure that stuff out. That's God stuff. That's not because I'm Pastor Trent. That's not because I'm special. But we do have to work at it. Are we working to hear the voice of God? Because there's lots of noise. Lots of things vying for our attention. And the devil 24-7. Jesus told a story. He tells a story about a farmer who goes out and he throws some seed. 
And the application of this parable is brilliant for what we're talking about. Listen to it from Mark chapter 4, starting in verse 15. Some people, so he's got people categorized. So we would do well to categorize ourselves as we listen. Some people are like seed along the path where the word is sown. As soon as they hear it, Satan comes and takes away the word. Boom. What does that look like in reality? God speaks, you say, oh yeah, and then you go, ah, that was a God. Could have been Him. Could it not? You want me to do what? No, that, that couldn't have been, you couldn't possibly be asking me to do that. Try Him. <laughs> what if Abraham had done that? Hey, I want you to start walking, I want you to leave the family business, I want you to start walking, and just go. Nah, that's not the Lord. Israel wouldn't have been born. No Israel. Are we hearing? Are we listening? Are we obeying? Others like seeds sown on rocky places hear the word and receive it with a great joy. Here's the point. Soil on a rock has a limited depth. Makes sense? We're good Bible students. This is how we think when we read, right? Therefore, a seed in there can only go so deep. I understand there are some that can punch through the rock. I get it. They hear the word at once and they receive it with great joy. Woo! Oh, pastor, that was a great sermon today. And then you get in a little traffic out here and all that goes away. You interact with someone, you're like, and it wears off quickly. Hmm. Since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. That's sad. That's why it's caution is to go, hey, what we talk about here, it could wear off by the car. Be careful. They could wear off by the door. Still others, like seed among the thorns, they hear the word. Now listen to this. This is dastardly. The worries of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth, and the desires for other things, they come in, and the word is choke. Choke out the word, and they make it unfruitful. Worries of this life, deceitfulness of wealth, And the desire just for other things. I just don't want to do it, God. I want to go to heaven. I just don't want you to mess up my life. And still others, the good soil, they hear the word and it explodes in them. They live life. They live the abundant life. So question, which soil are you? What is in your ear and how well are we listening? Because in Hebrews 7, sorry, Hebrews 3, 7, The writer of Hebrews is quoting Psalm 95. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as you did in the rebellion during the time of testing, where your fathers tested and tried me for 40 years. So, if you want to hear the voice of God, you can get better and better and better and more sensitive. Because I had four ear surgeries, I listened to the levels on my headphones very low. In fact, if I was to put them on you, you'd probably be like, I can't hear anything. I'd have super sensitive ears. Um, I think if we would all invest in the auditory thing with the younger generations and headphones, they're going to blow out their hearing. I mean, geez, I've sat next to people, I can hear their headphones. I I don't need to listen to music, I can listen to yours. (laughs) Just very sensitive ears. And the other day, I went to lower it, and it went boop, which meant... That's zero. <laughs> I was listening to them on one. Okay. Bionic ears. If you want to get worse at hearing God, when He speaks, deny it's Him. When He speaks, don't do what He says. When He speaks, don't act on it. You will become more and more and more calloused. 
and the guy talking to you had eardrum reconstruction. I'm grateful to be able to hear. It's unique that I'm musically inclined, but I know what it's like to not be able to actually hear. My parents would talk to me from behind, and they knew there was an issue because I was not responding because they put the fear of God in me. I responded always, but I learned to lip read. So the, here's, this is a very simple application. You can do what you want with it. What's in your ear? Are you growing more sensitive to God's voice? Or are you digging in your heels, not liking what you hear, and becoming more calloused? Ouch. So three applications. One, guard your ear. Guard your ear against the wrong noises, loud noises, because remember with Elijah, he wasn't in the earthquake, he wasn't in the fire, it was a still, small voice. Uh, the Hebrews say it's a gentle breath. They have to be very close to hear. That's the voice of God. Now, sometimes he makes it really obvious, but guard your ear. Guard against who you listen to. Second is this, train your hearing. Don't just hear the voice of God, train to understand. What is it He wants me to do? I talked to a friend of mine who just went on a spiritual pilgrimage, sort of a, a, a walk uh, for a week and a half. He said, I, I heard so much, I'm, I'm processing it, I'm going deeper with it. See, we move so fast, we don't do this. Are we listening? Are we hearing? Are we understanding? Are we obeying? And then this. This is full circle. Give life and hope to the ears of others. Ephesians 4.29 would say this, and we looked at it, we said, what's in your mouth? Let no unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only that which is useful for building up others in the faith. A friend of mine um, apparently went to a salsa club last night and sent me a video of this gentleman dancing. And she said, I almost had to go up and hug this man. And I don't know how good at salsa dancing you are. But this man, if I showed you the video, you go, this is the type of people you, you want to hang around with. They give you confidence. Living life to the fullest. And he's over here and he's dancing with this person. And then he's over here and he's dancing with this person. And then he's over here and he's dancing. And he's just, he doesn't care. He's just exuding life. And I think this is what we need in the church for people to just live the abundant life. And if you think I'm weird, I don't care. If you think hearing from God is old school, you are missing out. For someone from the other side of this spinning sphere to message me in the middle of the night and go, hey, the Lord just said pray about this. I'm like, oh my gosh, he told you too. That's awesome. I just think about if, if, if we just live this way, we're going to need more chairs. We're going to need more chairs. Jeremiah would say, if, if I shut my mouth about this stuff, it burns in my bones. I'm going to burn up from the inside out. Like my friend seeing the guy doing salsa saying, I just wanted to hug him. I didn't scold her and say, you probably should have. Because <laughs> when we meet people like this, we go, there's something different about you. Is your hearing different? Are you hearing the voice of God? What is in our ear? We need to block out the devil with things like this. Just give him the noise-canceling stuff. Because it is the stuff that takes your life, takes your hope, takes your vision. It, it frames people incorrectly. It assumes their motives. It's just destructive. Ah, but let's hear. God is talking. 
He is talking. If you're not hearing him, then let you and I talk because I want to help you because it is part of the abundant life. It is about living in freedom. Now, I understand. You, don't, you may not have my personality. I, 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 I'm a lot. I get it. I, I just, you know, I'm a little out there. But your God loves you so much. He wants to call 32 times in a few days. Sometimes he has to wake me up in the night because I'm not listening very well in the day. Because he knows I'm captive audience. <laughs> hmm. What is in our ear? These foundational things in the Apostles' Creed. Let's say them together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. Conceived. Our communion hymn today is, Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus. I love that line, how I've proved to more and more that it's in the past tense. Jesus, we've been walking together. I haven't done it perfectly, but 
in my life. I keep proving you right when I obey. I keep proving you right when I disobey, that your word is truth. I love that it's in the past tense. Maybe as you come to the table, you go, well, that's some true, that's some not true, or I didn't have a very good week, or I'm in a rough place. Perfect time to come to the table, the table of grace, where he invites. And it's interesting, my observation, the Lord has been, is doing things in this community at the table every week. I can see it in your face. He's doing the work with us. So today, what do you bring to the table that you need to leave with Him? As you take the wafer, as you take the cup, consume them. And as you do, Hand off what you need to hand off. Some of you are carrying very heavy things that you weren't meant to carry. His yoke is easy. His burden is light. That means he's supposed to be doing the carrying, not us. That's bad Bible. If you think that you're supposed to live under those circumstances. So come to the table of grace with someone that loves you knows you inside and out and still loves you even more than you can imagine. Father, oh, how you love us. You know everything about us and you're not walking away. You continue to pursue us more deeply. Allow us to experience a sense of your presence and grace today. And let's pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, be in the name.
<clears throat> our closing hymn today is God Be With You. We've sung this several times before. Please stand if you can. I have a home fun assignment for you. Not homework, teachers, home fun. Read the end of, um, I just forgot, Matthew 12. No, John 12, the end of John 12. Jesus is saying, I said it because the Father told me to say it. The question is, are we hearing it? All right, this is how he wants to work through us. So our benediction, hear what God says and do what God says. Real simple, right? Let's say it together. On three. One, two, three. Hear what God says. Do what God says. Blessings.